back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to start assembling the chassis of the Model T. I've already painted all the components, so let's take a look at the painting process first. So the frame of the Model T was originally painted black, although you can tell that from previous videos that my frame was far from being black. It had very deep pitted rust, scaling, flaking off. It was in pretty poor shape. I decided not to sandblast it. Instead, I used a wire wheel on a grinder. So this is an angle grinder with a wire brush wheel on it, and it took off all of the loose rust and flaking dirt and grime and everything that was stuck on this frame. This took it right off down to bare metal and really worked remarkably well. I was really impressed by this. So that took off all of the, the rust and stuff on the frame. Then I brushed on black Rust-Oleum paint. So this is a black Rust-Oleum enamel that I brushed onto the frame, and it's a really thick enamel paint, so when you brush it on, it kind of smooths out, and you can't see brush strokes in it. It works really well for that. So that worked really well. It's a Rust-Oleum paint, so the grinder will take off all of the loose rust, and it took it down to bare metal, and you could barely see any, any rust on it, but it was just slightly dull brown. So the Rust-Oleum paint chemically changes the rust to be a paintable surface and seals it. So that's the advantage of having a really thick enamel Rust-Oleum paint like this. So I think it did a really good job. I've been advised by other Model T people that this is what they have done and it has held up for many, many years. So I've decided that this is the way I'm going to go with it. If you have the money, sandblasting is a better way to do it. But it was prohibitively expensive and I think this is a good alternative and we'll see how long it lasts. But the frame is underneath the car and this is going to protect it and you can't see it anywhere. So I think this looks really good and it is going to protect it and keep the rust away. And it was a very cost effective method. It was more time consuming. It spent a lot of time with the wire wheel to get this good. You really have to put in the effort to, for surface preparation because if you miss the spot then you might have trouble. But it just takes a long time but it is a really good alternative to sandblasting. So that is what I have done in painting this frame. Now we're ready to assemble it. I've painted all the axle components and stuff, so we're going to start with the front axle today and get to the rear axle in another video. Well, now that I've painted all the separate components, it's time to start assembling it. So let's start with the front axle. So I've painted the front axle and all the steering components for the most part. I did a preliminary paint and I'm sure there's a couple little spots that I've missed. And once I put it together, I'm going to touch up all the spots that I've missed and everything else that might have got scratched or banged up while it's been moving around. I also haven't painted the hardware yet. I sandblasted it and I'm going to paint this once I assemble it. That way it's going to have a nice finished job when it's done. So the front axle is pretty straightforward. There's a couple spots that you should check for wear. There is the ball joint right here. This is for the steering. The steering arm moves this back and forth which in turn connects to each side of the arms on the wheels. So you should check these ball joints, make sure they're not too corroded. Mine all seem to be fine. They're not a heavy wear item. They should be good, but it's not a, a very critical component. So they feel pretty good. This feels like it's moving smoothly. So that's good. We have the steering spindles on each side. There's a brass bushing. I decided to tape them off when I painted it and leave it brass because I thought it looked kind of cool. I don't know if they did that from the factory or not. I would assume not. But I thought it looked kind of cool to have the brass on each side, so I left it unpainted. But those are the bushings that these bolts ride in. So this is the bolt that goes through the bushings and through the arm on each side to attach these spindles to the axle. So on these bolts on the top, you have an oiler head. So this is a lift-up oiler to put oil on the inside, liquid oil from like a pump can. And it has a hole on the side here that will let the oil drain down the inside of the bolt. So when I took this apart, there was a lot of built-up oil and grease on the bottom of this bolt and the bottom of the bracket. And that's just because it's an open oiling system. You put oil in the cap as needed, and it just kind of drains through and lubricates the whole shaft. So I've cleaned this up, did a little bit of light cleaning on this bolt to make sure it's all smooth, make sure it fits snugly inside of the bushings, and that all seems to check out. I cleaned up these oilers. These two oilers are the only ones that were still good on the car. I'm going to have to get all new for all the others, but these two actually work just fine, so I'm going to leave them be because they're original. 
All the others, the springs were bad in them. They wouldn't open. They were much too corroded. But these two were fine. So I'm going to reuse them. But as with the other thing, I did not paint them yet because it's a bolt and it's going to get beat up putting it together. So I'm going to give it a light coat of spray paint at the end after it's put together. So that's that. I believe that is all of the interesting parts of this front axle. We also have the two radius arms with the ball joint on there that joins to the front of the engine. Well, I guess it's kind of the middle of the engine, the front of the transmission, really. But that ball joint is for the suspension. I believe I pointed that out in a separate video. But I've checked that out. It seems to be fitting smoothly as well. It's a little more pitted than the others. It gets a little bit more heavy abuse than the steering because that, if you hit something on one side or the other, it transfers along that triangle to that ball joint. So that's a bit more of a wear item. It seems to be okay, though. It's pretty round. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So let's put this together. So I'm working on assembling the front axle. I have attached all the components that I painted. I have the main leaf spring and then the steering components and the spindles on either side. So now I'm going to put in the few new parts that I have. So first I wanted to point out the oilers. So as I mentioned previously, the oiler on the spindle bolt is the only one that is still good. I had to get new oilers for everything else, and there's, they're all over the place on this front axle. So here's one that I have installed on the hanger. So this piece is called the hanger that hangs the shackle on the leaf spring. So you have an a oiler on the hanger and then one on the leaf spring, both of which oil the shackle. So I haven't put one here yet. I wanted to point out that there is this size of the smaller ones, but then there's a bigger size that goes on the bolts on the spindle arms here. So this is a larger oiler for the main steering bolt. So there's only these two, one on each side of the larger ones. All the others on the front axle are the smaller size. So this is what they look like. Here's a larger one and then a smaller one. So basically these are just a press fit inside of each of those holes. What I've been doing is just slightly tapping on it with a small hammer and that drives it in just enough. So you only have to drive it in to where the smaller part of the taper fits inside of the hole. So it only moves in about halfway along this shank. So both of those I have set and now I have to do the rest of these and then I can put this on the frame. Now when I attach this to the frame I have a new rubber piece. So this is a rubber pad that mounts between the top of the leaf spring and the inner part of the frame where this bolts together. So the, there was an old one on here. I was falling apart. Very little of it was left. There was no pad left on the rear. But basically, this is just a rubber pad that fits in there. Now, the really old cars, the first couple years of the Model Ts, they used leather pads. But I forget the exact year, but about halfway through, I think it was, they changed to a rubber pad. And you can use rubber on any year of Model T. It's cheaper, a lot cheaper than the leather ones. And you can't see it, so it makes no difference but they do offer the leather ones in reproduction if you need them but it's just a pad to stop a little bit of the squeaking and make a nice surface to join the two metal pieces together so that is everything i need to put this front axle together so now i just have to bolt it up to the car well the car is finally starting to get put back together i just set the body back on the frame to get it out of the way in the shop so this is still going to come off it's not attached on here and get finished. It's just sitting here for now. So we have repainted the frame and assembled the front axle. So going forward we're going to be looking at the front wheels, painting and staining them, and then we're going to look at the engine block. We're going to rebuild the engine and put that in the car next. So be on the lookout for those videos. If you liked this video, please comment on it, subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video, and thank you for watching.